Hi everyone. Today I'll be showing you how to make a cardigan and I've drawn in my rather inept way the general plan of how I intend to make this cardigan. It, it will be knitted on this loom. I've actually already started it. This is the loom that I'll be using. It has um, altogether 50 pegs. That's 24 pegs here, 24 pegs here and two here. So it's 50 pegs and I'll be using every one of them. The, I'll be making one bag with the width of 18. This is the width of the loom. And so the m amount you would be actually knitting would be 22 inches. So as you, um, the length of the, of the, from the shoulder to the back is 22 and 18 is the width. Two front pieces which are 22 by 8 and a half. I have, it, this part is slightly less than half of the back because you have to have a little bit of space for the neck. And the two sleeves which I haven't really decided yet what I intend, what length it will be. This is the yarn I'll be using. This one's from China. It's from the People's Republic of China. The um, the thread is acrylic, 100% acrylic. It doesn't have, hasn't given any um, length, you know. Basically, the weight of a yarn, this is 40 grams, but it's not indicative of how many skeins you will need because basically the most important thing about deciding how much um, yarn you will need for a project is not based on the weight because you can have very heavy yarn and it could be very short so you still would need many many balls of the yarn to complete a project but if a piece is light and if it's very long you still would need less of it you see so that's not a very good indicator how many grams it is and this one uses five to six millimeter which is actually very very good for these pegs these pegs are uh, will go very well with the type of yarn that is for five to six millimeters now i also want to show you the fasteners i intend to use but i actually haven't decided it could be this one this is rather pretty and i bought all these from amazon amazon had a nice little sale for all them almost next to nothing they were to send from uh, England to Italy this is another one that is nice I because I don't really like doing button holes you know on a, on a on a knitted piece which I actually don't at all like doing this one is also another one that you can just sew on one side and then close it because it's a cardigan so it will be open in the front well this is especially nice see it, it's got a very clever clasp look at that it's very nice so what I'm going to do is that I will start off the piece and as I go, I, will, um, I won't show you from beginning to the end each part that I'm doing. I will start it off and then come back when it's finished. Since I've already started the piece, the back piece, I will demonstrate how to cast on and start knitting with this loom. But what you have to remember is that when you're working this you do not join here because this is a flat panel that means it's not joined up here you know so you start from the beginning here and you go all the way to the end and then you go back again this way that's how you work a flat panel now to cast on what you need to do is very simple first you make the normal adjustable knot and put it here now I found the easiest way to do this is you can either just go like this and then you come back and knit it off or you do it this way the way I do it is this way you do you wind it twice each peg twice this way and continue going round in this method this is quite fast and um, 
actually both methods are quite good actually you can either wind around like this and then you come back that way or you just do it this way both are equally good methods you just have to remember when you're going from the left to the right you're always winding clockwise because the yarn has always got to be inside not outside if you're if you come back and you find that you're winding it like this that means it's wrong it's the wrong direction it has to be inside the yarn has to go inside so that's how you remember from left to right it's clockwise you're turning and when you come back in the other direction it will be anti-clockwise I won't do the whole thing I'm just going to show you how to come back so I'll just do it till the end here just to give you an idea of how to cast on and start knitting although there are seriously there are so many videos on YouTube that on loom knitting that show you how to cast on and knit you don't really need me to show you how to do this but you know since I'm going to be showing you how to make the cardigan I thought I better so let's say this is the last part that actually you've reached here which you haven't I'm just you know so what you do is you come back this way you see I'm going anti-clockwise now this will become your first row you just cast on and this is your first row you keep on doing this just keep on doing it Oops. well don't make mistakes like that but that's how you do it now um, here you have it see like I said you have to start here and end here and don't join them and um, you continue knitting now, uh, since I'm going from right to left, it will be anti-clockwise. You keep on doing back and forth. And when this part here becomes 22 inches, or depending on how long you want your cardigan to be, you stop at that length 24 inches or 26 inches it is up to you since I'm making a rather short one that I can wear with a pair of jeans I'm only making it 22 inches so that's entirely up to you but the width of this piece is 18 so if you find that uh, 18 is too little for you you can use the longer loom that gives you 22 inches 22 inches will give you a cardigan that has a width of um, circumference I mean your chest will be 44 because you can make um, 22 in front and um, in and 22 in the uh, in the back that will give you 44 so this one will give you 18 and the front will be slightly smaller so it's about um, 37 36 37 size chest okay I have managed to knit this piece up to a length of about let's just check this okay now I decided to go up to 24 because if it was 22 inches it will be a very very short cardigan so I thought 24 would be better so I'm going for I'm going to go for 24 if you can hear um, constant whirring in the background that's my fan it's pretty hot here right now so the temperature is um, almost 28 degrees no it's actually 29 degrees so it's pretty hot and um, so I've got the fan in the background 
if I find that the sound is too distracting, I will do this later then. I'll retape it later. Let me just check. Yeah, it's about 23. Now, you don't have to worry about actually counting the number of rows, you know. I always believe in doing things simply, you know. Because even if you make a mistake, it will be slightly off by one row. It's not going to make a significant difference to the back and the front if you make the back one row less or the front one row more. It's not really going to make a big deal of difference. Now, when you want to cast off, you always want to end it on this side of the loom, on the right side. You shouldn't end it with here because it's difficult to cast off from that direction. What you need to do is always end on the right side. That means, when, like right now, it's finished here. The yarn ends here. So you do the knit until you end it here. Alright, I'm on my very last row. This is the last row which has to end here. Like I said, you have to end on this side for you to be able to um, bind off the project. That means you're finishing your back part. I just want to check how long this is for a moment. Let me just check. Yeah, it's almost 24. Yeah. Curl and actually it'd be slightly more than that, you know, when you finish because I'll be finishing off with uh, two rows of single crochet. So it'll be slightly longer than 24, very slightly longer. All right, um, here we have the final row. I'm doing the final row and then I'll teach you how to bind off. Actually, Good Knife Kisses has a very, very good video on how to bind off, but you know, I'm gonna show this to you. This is my final row. When you're doing this uh, knit, uh, try not to wind the thread too tightly because if you wind the thread too tightly around the pegs your knit knitting the work itself will get very very tight so as you work you 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 find yourself having a great deal of difficulty trying to lift the yarn and putting it over like this if you do it too tightly so hold the yarn very lightly when you are wrapping it around the pegs you know don't knit them tight this is a very common uh, mistake that most people make because they tend to pull the thing and try to make it look as uh, tight as possible, which is not the right way to do it because basically you are causing a lot of um, tension in the thread because wool, like um, most of this uh, yarn, is quite stretchy, you know. So when you pull on it tight, it, it gives way. It has, it has a bit of give, you see. So it gives you the the impression that you can tighten it some more and the more you tighten it as time goes pretty soon you will have a work that is very very um, tight and you'll be struggling trying to knit off the like this part here you know it's look at it how easily it goes over there's no problem with it you know but if you do it very tight you will be pulling on it you know and as of course if you're pulling on the peg you're also uh, weakening the pegs you know and um, they might break but even if they do break you can use super glue and glue them back in fact I think one of my peg came loose and I did on the purple loom I think it came off and what I did was I just used super glue and glued it back and left it alone for half a day I know it's supposed to be instant and all but you know I thought what the heck give it um, half a day before I decided to use it again all right now I'm rambling because I'm trying to fill up the space trying to finish the last row okay now we are going to be on this side of the loom which is what I told you is how you start your bind off for the project that you're working on this is the back piece of the cardigan Now, let me show you how you bind off. First, the yarn comes from this direction. 
make sure you pull enough so that there's it's loose eh? make sure also that you always make it loose this part has to be loose otherwise when you straighten your piece out you will find that it will curl up the sides all will go in because you've gone and made it too tight so the first thing you do is do an ordinary knit on the next peg not the first one you knit then you take it take the peg off and put it on the next the one that you the first peg now don't pull it tight just leave it like that and just knit off like that and then take it and put it here now this becomes your first so you've knit off one already again very tight don't tighten it very lightly hold it then lift it put it here knit off carry it lift it put it here make sure it's very loose yeah? there you go again after you've knit off there will be a bit of purchase you know you see quite a bit of yarn coming off it's okay don't worry about it it's not going to cause any problem you'll have a loose bottom cast off you know so that you don't it you see it's not curling the bottom curling in that is it will curl up but it won't curl in if you make it loose let me do a few more so that you can see how it looks like I shall do them in silence with my fan whirring in the background as accompanying music there you go you know all these things that I'm doing yeah, I followed some of the videos and all that but most of it was trial and error you know after I tightened one piece and then I realized what a horrible look it gave I finally realized I'm not going to, not supposed to tighten it like that, you know. And I had to take everything off and put it back and redo it. You know, that's how you learn actually. Learn to do things by making mistakes. See as it comes off, can you see that? That's the, the bind off. And it's not pulling in any way. See the stitches are like, like that. Don't worry about the fact that they look big or anything like that because you'll be finishing off with a uh, single crochet so it will look fine. I'll come back when I'm finished with this piece and show you how it looks completed. I thought that I might better i better show you this part to you again you know because i think it was off the camera earlier what you need to do is that let's take for instance that this is the last um stitch that you had that was here originally what you need to do is that you need to knit this off here then you lift this stitch and then you put it here knit off again lift it and put it back where it came from originally and then go on doing it always holding the yarn very loosely here you go lift put back knit the next one lift it put it here then knit off again knitting is always lifting the bottom piece over the top like this it's called knitting. Ah, I made a mistake, sorry. Not this one. I'm supposed to knit the next one. See, made a mistake. That one, then you lift this and then you put it here. And you keep doing this. Knitting off the next one, not the one that I did just now. That was a mistake. 
keep on doing it like this and this is a bind off it gives a chain bind off actually the effect it looks like you chained the top chain as in a crochet stitch see look at that see it's a chain bind off and it's not pulling and making it scrunch up like that you know it's quite straight okay I'm on my last stitch I've managed to bind off everything and I'm going to take it off and show you what it looks like voila gone now this is the last one just pull the thread through and there you have it see it's a flat piece this is what I mean by a flat piece now let's look at the measurements it's about 18 of course if you want something longer you like to use the 60 peg loom that will give you a 22 inch width this is the back part of the cardigan and this is the bind off see it curls inwards i mean upwards at least you know but it doesn't curl from here to here that's because you didn't tighten the stitches and so you finish it off like that see the row you don't have to worry about this curling like i said if you do two rows of single crochet it will be fine so now we will do the same thing for the front we have to do two fronts and um, they will be the same length as this let me see how much it is after i bound off Maybe slightly longer than I thought. Well, actually, right now the the wool is still. It just came off the yarn. It says twenty six, but it's not. It will, it will uh, contract a bit, you know, because it's just come off the loom. Give it a bit of time to rest. When I measure it tomorrow, it should be around twenty four like that. Shouldn't be this long. Should be around twenty four. Anyway, that's the thing about uh, working on these looms. You know, they the 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 piece. The final piece you have to let it rest a bit before it will give you the actual measurements i've completed the two front pieces that you have to do this was the back now the two front pieces are, have also been done there are two pieces they look yeah they're, they're because they are curling in this way this is normal once you join them all up they will stop doing that now what I've done is that there were 50 these used 50 this one used 50 stitches in all all of it 50 stitches you know to make a width of 18 but here you have to give a little bit of space around the neck you see Otherwise, you know, you can't have a piece that completely covers and, you know, there will be no space for the neck. So I left six stitches off for the neck and um, I made one with 22 stitches. Yeah, 22 stitches, so that makes it 44 so I gave six stitches for the neck six stitches for the neck will because there are 50 stitches in all 50 minus six stitches will give you 44 stitches so you do 22 stitch each left and right of this this is left and right so when you join it you will have here and here now there is a space here then for the neck what you will do later on is create a front panel about this big both sides that will be the space where you put the buttons so you don't have to worry about the fact that you've got six stitches less 
so later on we'll be doing a front um, there will be a front band you know on both sides that will go round and then round the neck and come back down again which will be done in uh, silver crochet I'll show you how to do that so this part each of these is 22 stitches okay We just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 stitches on each side there are 22 stitches and they are the same length. They come out to the same length which was 24. So this is the front and the back which have been completed. Now I wanted to show you how to do the sleeves now the sleeve it has to have a width because it, it is both the front and the back it will be joined to this to the to the body and to the front and the back so the you're stitching the whole sleeve now For the sleeve, I thought I'd better show it in by means of a diagram. Now, the sleeves that we are going to make will have to be joined to the front and to the back. That means it's the whole sleeve. You'll be sewing the whole sleeve. You're not doing half the sleeve and then joining two halves. No, you're doing a whole sleeve. So, the width of the sleeve, I've given about 15 inches. Now 15 inches will be enough for it to have ease around your armhole because if you don't give uh, sufficient ease around the armhole, what will happen, you see this is quite big, this is for like a medium sized person, you know, if you don't give enough space around the armhole, what will happen is that it will be very tight and uncomfortable, you see, so what you do is if you want more, you need to... Uh, take this measurement put it through your hand and then try to put it all the way up to your arm hole and see that you have ample room to move you know and if you need more you adjust accordingly so this one I'll be doing about 15 inches now 15 inches since we know 18 inches is 50 pegs 15 inches will be about 42 pegs you know and um, this sleeve will have to be shaped it will become narrower towards the wrist so we'll start off with 42 pegs but around the 8 inch mark we will start reducing I will um, come back since I've already started it this is the sleeve I have put 42 pegs up to here and once I reach 8 inches I'll come back and show you how you decrease so that your sleeve will be shaped come to the point where we're going to do the decrease for the sleeves now um, we cast on because the sleeve has to be around 15 inches around the armhole 15 inches is 42 pegs so you work from the armhole this is where the armhole is it will be 15 15 um, inches here but at certain point you will have to gradually decrease the sleeve Otherwise, if you do a sudden decrease, it will look very odd. So, at, um, at 10 inches, we'll start shaping the sleeves. And you shape it until it becomes 11 inch width. So, all together, you will have to get 30 pegs. So, from 42, you will reduce it to 30 pegs. So, that means you'll have to reduce 12 stitches. So, what we will do is that we will we'll reduce them 2 stitches at a time. So over about eight nine inch, eight inches like that, you'll be reducing six times the stitches. So I think about four rows. After every four rows, you can um, reduce two stitches. So you start when the sleeve is ten inches. Here the sleeve is now ten inches. So what you need to do is to reduce. Now how you reduce is very simple. What 
you do is here you just lift this one here this is your, where your thread is now right you just lift this and put it here you need both of it off that's a reduction by one stitch and then you go on working the sleeve you just continue knitting until you reach the other side and then you reduce the last two stitches the same way show you this whole row otherwise you know you won't be able to picture how it's done so I'm just going to show you this whole row how you reduce the stitch all you have to do is just measure you know I'm not going to count the number of rows that I've already done because you know a row here a row there it's really not going to make a big difference so it, what I do normally is that I just go by measurement. I don't actually count rows because, uh, you know, it's, I don't think that precision is really so required because it's not really going to be noticeable if you leave a, you know, if you make a one row or two row difference on the other sleeve, you know. I know some people are very particular about precise measurements if you want you can count the number of rows you've done so that when you reach 10 here you know exactly how much how many rows you've done and you can do the same thing on the other sleeve if you feel that um, estimates are not to your liking but I'm I'm a bit lazy you know so I love to do this kind of thing I just go by measurements I don't like to make things complicated for myself. Okay, now before we go here, finish this. Stop just before the last stitch. Now what you do is you lift this and place it here. Place it there, then you knit it off. Both of them lift it over. There you go. Your first decrease has been done. Now you do them every four or five rows until you reach. Um, I'm going to make a sleeve that's about 18, 19 inches for myself. I mean, depending on the length of your arms, you can decide how much you want to do. But, you know, as I pointed out, whatever measurements that you have to do, by ratio, you can decide how many pegs you need, you know. Because 18 inches is 50 pegs. 15 inches would be 15 times by 50 divided by 18, which gives you 42 pegs. So you can use the same uh, calculation. After I finish both the sleeves, we'll come back and I'll, sh and I'll, I'll continue. I've actually uh, finished all the pieces now. Just wanted to show you the the pieces. And what you have to do now is that you need to have you must have like it's been finished 
doing all the different parts of the cardigan you will have one back two fronts and two sleeves these are what you need to do and now you have to join the back to the front now the way to do it is you can either use a needle and some people like to do that because it gives almost an invisible um, seam you know where they join it in a very but it's a bit slow to do it because you know you need to make sure that you join it in such a way that not this part here you have to join this one to this so that you you mask the the two the chained parts you know and then you will have a almost invisible seam but i don't do things like that you see so because it takes quite a bit of time instead i'm going to count 22 stitches here and put a marker after i've counted 22 stitches let's do that now okay one one two three four five six eight, 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 eight. Twenty two stitches each side, leaving you one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the empty stitches, the ones that you're supposed to leave for the neck. Then, what you do is you pin them. Now, you have to decide which side you want to be at the bottom, you know. I usually, the part that I cast off, not the one where I cast on, the cast on part, I usually let it lie at the bottom here similarly this is the cast on part so I've let it be at the bottom so you do the same thing as far as possible try to match the sides you know so this was the cast off this was the cast on so make sure that it goes at the bottom because this part is also the cast on bit so try to match the cast off with cast off. So place this final thing here. Final stitch here. Use pins. What I like to do is that when I'm joining, I use a crochet needle and I go through both, just one thread. That means I pick up one thread from here, back, back, this one, the back one, and the front one here. I go through them individually and crochet them off. And that's the way I join it. One sec. Now what you need to do is that um, you pick up the back stitch, not the front, 
the back stitch here and the front stitch here you have a knot and you pull it through first one you just do a knot so that you can secure it here same thing go to the next stitch back front hang on did I get the correct stitch no it should be the back stitch sorry back so you see this is the chain make sure you collect the back stitch and go through this that one is the front then you just do a slip stitch some people find sewing much more easier it's up to you actually what you want to do if you think that sewing is easier for you then do that slip stitch but I find this much faster once you get a rhythm going you will find that this is much easier to do I'll show you how it looks on the other side in a minute try not to make it too short the chain you know if you make it too short then it will pucker up and it won't look nice so this is much easier to do than to use a needle and thread okay let's have a look on the other side what it looks like See the joint? It's almost seamless. There's no way to tell that you've actually joined. It's a good method of joining. Continue doing the same thing. Back. this one back and the front of this chain so that when you join them they look like they are not there is nothing there is no indication that you've actually joined anything you can get the same effect with a needle and thread and perhaps not as bulky because you know you are chaining here adding on stitch so you will get a ridge you know at the back but you will not have that if you use a needle and thread. I like doing things that uh, don't take that much time, you know, because I find that yes, I mean sometimes you know you you do things so they will look extremely nice, but if it's really not going to make a lot of uh, noticeable um, change i don't see a point in giving yourself extra work so if you can cut short a method go ahead and do it that's my motto to have taken a stitch here and there. Okay. Make sure you join them properly and you don't have any extra stitches so that when you take them out 
see it's all joined properly without no visible appearance that you've joined anything do the same for the other side and uh, I'll come back and show you how to do the sleeves now join both the fronts to the back see both fronts have been joined joined both fronts now to do the sleeves again place a marker on the center of this Take the sleeve again, always right sides facing, right side facing. Divide the sleeve into half. This is the narrower part, this is the wider part. the center mark it trace the center place the center here match it up use pins again Leaves come here, see, like that. So, do the same thing. Join again, do the same thing. Huh? Always, when you look at the chain, back to the front. So that you can avoid a noticeable ridge. Join this whole sleeve. Do the same for the other side. Once we've joined the sleeve, we will come back and I will show you how to do the front bands. This is a cardigan that has now been the sleeve, the sleeves and the front has been all joined up okay this is how it looks now if you notice the front doesn't quite close obviously because we took away six stitches for the neck you know what we have to do now is that we have to create a band on both sides so that we can put the buttons and that will complete the cardigan. The band will go all the way from here and it will go all the way up around the neck and then come all the way down again to the bottom. Now the important thing to know is that you can either it's up to you if you're good at knitting you can pick up the stitches along here and knit a rib so that you can place your buttons however you want to do it like you know if you want to have a button holes and a button that is up to you but i'm not going to do that because you see when you look at the stitches here you can see that the stitches are not even you see the row each row compared to each stitch 
the stitches are actually fatter than the rows so when you pick up you must decrease uh, or increase i'm not very sure accordingly so that you don't have a band that doesn't fit properly where it, um, parts of it go tight and so it'll pucker insides and um, or it's too big and it will look very very ugly if you don't do it properly but crochet doesn't have that problem because a crochet single crochet should give you a flat and um, even edge so after i've finished putting away all the thread i will start to crochet a band around and i'll show you how to do that now this is a collection of hoops that i have here which i'm going to use we'll see the problem is that you need to look at this eh? you need to make a stitch a single crochet that will fit fit here each one exactly fit into a hole because you're making it along the side you know and for you to be able to do that you have to experiment you don't have a choice so i've got a collection of hooks here this one is four millimeter i think this is too small this is also i think four millimeter so <clears throat> you should try with the five millimeter six millimeter what is this seven millimeter well seven looks a bit too fat um this one is also six and this one is 5.5 okay now you try doing a row and then you check the stitches important thing is that they must not be too big if they're too big what will happen is that they will be a bumpy wavy front which again looks horrible but if you do it too small what will happen is that as you go the piece the the, the front will pucker like this you know because there's not enough stitches so the only way you can find out exactly what gauge of crochet needle that you will need is to try it out do a row and look at it and see whether it is exactly fitting the the front band once you get the correct stitch then you do however big you want your front band to be it should be quite big like you know maybe about that big so it should be quite a few rows of um, uh, single crochet for you to achieve that I've done the front this is the band it will actually be a V neck when you wear it this part will open out like a V and then you can put your fasteners along here I've done it with a six millimeter hook crochet hook and I done six rows of single crochet now maybe because this is a multicolored yarn you don't actually notice that this stitch is different from here it's not obvious you know maybe if you use a solid colored yarn it might have an effect you know in the look i'm not very sure about it because i have not tried such a band on a solid colored cardigan now the other thing is that you notice something it lies completely flat there's no waving meaning that there are too many stitches along the band and there's no puckering along the side meaning that there are too little stitches along the band now it comes along flat now this one you cannot achieve this unless you experiment with the hook until you get the look and so it's um it's a rather thick band actually quite big but then you'll be putting the fasteners so you know let's see the finished look when i'm done i'll take a picture of it this one i'll do uh, one row or two rows of uh, single crochet and also the bottom it needs a couple of rows of single crochet and that will be the end of this project the cardigan hopefully your cardigan turns out better than mine and um happy looming then <laughs>